Oh, hello, my name is Peter Gogg. I'm the Forest Health Manager for the North Dakota Forest Service. And this presentation is about trees in North Dakota. When people hear that I work for the North Dakota Forest Service, they almost always respond with a giggle and say, North Dakota has trees? And I, of course I say, yes, we do have trees. We have 1.556 million acres of trees. About 800,000 of those are natural forests, and the rest are what we might call trees outside of forest, which are the narrow linear forests of conservation plantings and the smaller riparian forests. So these linear planted forests fall within the other 43.7 million acres of North Dakota's landscape that are not naturally forested. So this raises the question, why were these 43 million acres not forested? So fundamentally, it's because North Dakota's climate and topography and the historic disturbance regime of frequent fire and large mammal grazing. But we're not gonna get into the disturbance regime. We're gonna focus on climate, topography, and the soils. So this presentation is really about the other 43 million acres and how they tended not to grow natural forests, and what are the implications of planting trees in these areas. In order to get to the bottom of this, we need to think about the climate and topography and the soils that exist here. How do these variables influence tree growth? The goal is ultimately to understand that planting trees in much of the North Dakota landscape requires care and ongoing maintenance to help these trees best tolerate the challenges of our landscape. The climate is a long-term average of the weather, which is a combination of the temperature and precipitation and how it's distributed across the year. North Dakota has a climate described as humid continental, which has four distinct seasons receiving precipitation in all four. What's important to understand about this climate is that there is a distinct difference in the amount of precipitation that falls across the state annually. There are a couple figures here that show the annual precipitation from western North Dakota moving across to east central Minnesota. I wanted to show the change in precipitation across the prairie and into a historically forested landscape, in this case Grand Rapids, Minnesota. As you move from the west to the east, more annual precipitation falls. Our annual precipitation supports short grass communities in the drier western side of the state and tall grass communities in the wetter eastern side. Generally, the total annual precipitation in the eastern side of the state is approaching the minimum commonly found supporting natural tree growth and reproduction. When we add in the historic fire regime and native large mammal grazing, trees simply had little opportunity to develop outside of locations that concentrated moisture. You can see in the lower figure that this is not only the amount, but the timing of precipitation that matters. These are the same three locations showing a steady increase in precipitation through June. After June, there is much less growing season precipitation as you move to the west. And this is important because vegetation is developing through this period, requiring available soil moisture for transpiration of water from the soil through the leaf. When this moisture becomes limiting, photosynthesis and growth decline or stop. What's important to understand from this is that a given amount of ground area needs to support more leaf area when the vegetation is forested as compared to a grass community. This is one of the reasons why trees tend to evolve in landscapes with more precipitation and available soil moisture. In a general sense, this also points to nowhere in North Dakota where planted trees would not benefit from supplemental watering. Our regional climate doesn't just receive less precipitation than most forested landscapes. It also influences a couple other associated variables that have physiological consequences for vegetation. Wind and vapor pressure deficit, which is a deficit between the moisture in the air and how much moisture the air can actually hold. The larger that deficit, the greater the demand on the vegetation to transpire water from the soil through the leaf surface to the atmosphere. 
These two play important roles in the ability of a tree to tolerate a growing site. The wind influences what is called boundary layer conductance. The stronger the wind, the greater the loss of water from the leaf. But there is also a relationship to the size of the leaves on the vegetation. The larger the leaf, the less readily it will lose water, so the lower the conductance. Trees like conifers have the potential for higher rates of boundary layer conductance because of their small leaves, while larger leaves on deciduous trees can maintain lower conductance for the same wind speed. The other variable, vapor pressure deficit, means that our climate creates greater atmospheric demand for moisture during the growing season than many of the forested landscapes to the east, and this is shown in the summer VPD figure on this slide. This demand creates a potential for more tension in the water column from soil to leaf, or what is termed the soil plant atmosphere continuum. Increased tension can lead to shorter growth increment in trees planted in North Dakota than you might find in the same species historical range. As an example of this, the rate of growth in natural growing ponderosa pine in Oregon is twice that of planted ponderosa pine in the plains. There are a couple important takeaways from this. One is that the characteristics of the vegetation matter for the site. And two, by influencing the orientation of multiple trees, we can create a situation that helps them maintain lower rates of conductance by limiting turbulence within the canopy. Soils are a consequence of time, the historic climate, topography, the flora and fauna on a site, and the parent material. In North Dakota, the climate, topography, and glaciation differentiate our soils from traditional forest soils. In a general sense, the more precipitation a location receives, the more leaching can occur in the soil profile. This means that fine soil particles and minerals get moved lower in the profile, causing more differentiation in the soil horizons. Adding in increasing gradient to the topography further intensifies these processes. Having very little topographic variation means that less variation in the soil horizons occurs. The historic climate and glaciation in North Dakota created an abundance of fine texture soils that are generally difficult soils for trees to grow in. A fine textured soil that is composed of tiny silt and clay particles has very little airspace and more water holding capacity. A forest soil that experiences more precipitation would generally have a higher content of sand and coarse material. So soils made up of higher components of silt and clay have slower water infiltration and oxygen diffusion, which can increase the difficulty a tree would experience exchanging these molecules. Increased water holding capacity keeps water in the soil longer, but as water content declines, it becomes more and more difficult to remove any additional water from the soil. The response to this is often decreasing photosynthesis and growth, with increasing tension in the soil plant atmosphere continuum, which is exacerbated by increasing tree height. As for oxygen, the tiny airspace of fine textured soils limits its presence, allowing for rapid depletion from normal root functioning when the soils are saturated. This also reduces growth and can also cause tree mortality. We saw some of this following the extreme wet fall of 2019, followed by heavy snow insulating saturated soils through the winter. Saturated spring soils caused a higher incidence of mortality in conifers in low slope positions. So the availability of water in North Dakota's fine textured soils theoretically creates a smaller window of ideal tree growing conditions when considering the climate and topography of the site. As was previously mentioned, the topography plays an important role in the development of soil horizons and it also influences the movement of water on or in the soil. Water adheres to soil particles, so fine particles have more sites to adhere to, which slows water conductivity in the soil. 
Therefore, the soil moisture for a particular site is depicted by soil texture and the topographic characteristics. Low topographic relief and low conductivity of fine textured soils encourages soil saturation in low slope situations, which can cause growth restrictions from low soil oxygen. Furthermore, North Dakota's landscape has 39 million acres of soils that have high concentrations of salts, which are soluble in water. These salts were not leached off the landscape because of our subtle topography, leaving them to remain transient as dissolved salts in the soil profile with variations in soil moisture and precipitation. The presence of these salts in the rooting zone limits the availability of water for plants by altering the soil osmotic potential, decreasing the water movement into the roots. The consequence for vegetation is hydraulic limitation, which causes tree decline and slowing growth. The presence of salts can frequently be seen as white surface crusts left behind as the water evaporates. These issues emphasize the need to plant in the locations that are least likely to experience fluctuations in accumulating moisture and dissolved salts with limited drainage. Locations that are topographically considered to be the shoulder or backslope positions will avoid transient salts in the rooting zone. Locations with higher slope angles and riparian areas have the natural tree growth, and that's because water is concentrated by these features, but continues to drain away the salts. The conditions of the site play an important role in how the resources of water, light, and nutrients become available to a tree. I will stress water here because it is often limiting growth in our landscape, as mentioned earlier. In the context of plantings, light is only an issue if the arrangement of trees introduces shading of leaves, and this can be adjusted as needed through planting orientation and periodic maintenance. Nutrients are commonly not limiting resources for trees and most often become of interest with foliar yellowing of birch and maple trees because of the lacking availability of magnesium and iron in high pH soils. All of these resources are in constant flux as seasons come and go and trees increase in size. This slide is a good representation of how the site conditions can influence resource availability. This is a planting of spruce that was placed along an older planting of several rows of green ash. The ash were planted several years earlier than the spruce. The inside spruce row had slower rates of growth because it received less of all the necessary resources because it competed with both the spruce and the ash trees on either side. The outer spruce row grew at a faster rate and eventually had some maintenance done to remove every other tree, further increasing growing space and resource availability. The limited development of the inner row has prevented these trees from responding to more growing space now that the ash has been absent from the site for a few years. Within each of the rows, we can see that some trees are dead and or missing. This is very likely due to oxygen depletion from saturated soils or the presence of soluble salts. Either could be concluded based on the extremely fat, flat topography with very subtle depressions where the mortality occurred. This site becomes a good example of how subtle topography can influence water and salt accumulation. The fine textured soils of the Red River Valley and the fluctuation in seasonal precipitation also reduce growth increment on all of the trees, but it is more pronounced on the underdeveloped spruce. In summary, I'm hoping that this presentation drove home the idea that water availability, more than any other variable, will overcome most of the challenges placed on North Dakota's planted trees. Doing what is necessary to assure the maximum amount of water for your planted trees is the goal. Supplemental watering during periods of low precipitation should be done when available, and eliminating competition for water when not. Maintenance by removing competing vegetation such as grass and herbaceous species should be done periodically, and reductions in density of the trees in your planting should be done as growing space is filled. Planting the right tree in the right place and assuring it has limited competition 
will be the most effective way to maintain resource availability and ultimately tree health. This concludes this presentation. Thank you very much for your time.